Hi everybody, McBeard here. Welcome to another video, gameplay video from the new Nilfgaard patch. Today I'm coming at you with some monsters gameplay. I'm very excited about the future for consume monsters. Uh, and I think that they have a, like a huge, huge influx of power, versatility, flexibility, and just generally I think a lot of the clunkiness that was coming along with the newly designed Neckers and the way Necker Warriors were uh, interacting um, with them. I think that there was a clunkiness to it in that uh, you, would, you would copy your Neckers uh, in order for them to keep replacing themselves, but ultimately uh, end up drawing them or or keeping them on the board when you wanted them to go away and replace themselves. Well, all of that is no longer an issue. Consume Monsters has arrived, so this is a great piece of gameplay coming in. This gameplay, I believe my opponent for this one is the one and only King Blacktooth, who is playing Emir. So you get to see some Nilfgaard gameplay in this one as well, but mainly this is going to showcase the differences between the new Neckers, Necker Warriors, Vran Warriors, uh, the new Crones, uh, Harpies, Commander's Horn, Aridin, and I believe I believe those are the main changes, plus there is some Nilfgaard gameplay as well. So you'll notice, basically the main things to notice are that the Neckers do buff themselves when they're on the battlefield. Uh, Necker Warriors, when they copy a unit, they put it at the bottom of the deck so you don't draw them. The monster passive only keeps the last played unit, so unless the last played unit was the Necker, you're not going to keep it. And then of course the Vran Warriors consuming the weakest unit on the row every turn which sometimes are harpy eggs, which is kind of a crazy combination. So lots of great stuff to see in this video. Uh, I'll see you in the gameplay. I hope you enjoy. All right, folks. Patience is not a virtue I am known to have. You shall die, world. It's the new K-Ran snacks coming at you. So you can see what I have in my hand. You'll notice the crones as well. So the crones are a six, seven, eight staggered at this point. Otherwise, they're the same. I honestly think that's the best change they could have made. I didn't want them to change them too much. Uh, crones, man. New commander's horn, as you can see, add five strength to all units on the row, non-gold units. The new Vran warrior, there it is. Pause the video if you want to see the descriptions uh, as well. Not all these descriptions were final. Hungrily looking for a Necker and I found it. So my opponent here, King Blacktooth playing Emir Var Emraz. Fake Siri coming down first. Let me tell you, Consume Monsters loves Fake Siri. Excellent, tasty snack for so many of them. But we're going to do standard opening. We're going to play the Necker into the Necker Warrior to get more of them in the deck. And you'll see, this gets a little out of control. Gets a little out of control. I want to play those crones first. Because uh, they do function in the same way. Thin the deck, get them out, don't want to draw them. I am running Diamond Room Shackles in this deck because I wanted to see if I could play Karen, shackle it, and then keep it because it was the last unit played. But, uh, spoiler alert, I uh, I don't do that. <laughs> it's all very new stuff for us. Nice, Ted the Emissary pulls out the Manganel. The Manganel. I'm not scared of it. So now I have four Neckers in my deck. And they're all at the... Well, two of them are at the bottom of the deck. I won't ever draw them, and I won't ever keep one. It is a great time to be alive. Aridin also is now a 12-strength, fully weather immune unit. Aridin got... Aridin got a huge buff. Huge buff. His emissary pulled out his Vicavara Medic, which had nothing to pull out of my graveyard, so... Uh, and this happened to be in another gameplay. Uh, it does happen, and it's too bad when that happens. So you got to be careful about holding Vicavaro medics, playing emissaries and Vicavaros in the same deck. Um, it's just always a liability uh, when you play those two cards together. But they're both really strong cards. And you want to play them together, too, because you don't mind using Vicavaro medic to get those spies back out to further thin your deck. So that interaction is a little eh. It's a little very, it's very low strength. So I take advantage of the fact that I have a At big lead. Last. Now, I didn't get punished here. I should have played the Crones before playing Avalok, and I didn't get punished by it. Just uh, pre-patch uh, special testing things where you just want to play all the new cards and just play things. Not really put a lot of thought into it.
Love consume monsters in this patch, though. We haven't even gotten started yet. Some of the stuff that comes out of this. It's really... Joaquim Duet pulls out his other Vicarvara medic, which is also rendered useless because there's nothing for it to pull. It does get the buff, but that's probably your worst case scenario. Uh, it's basically like paying, playing a six strength silver, sort of, kind of, in a way. So the Vran Warrior is going to start chowing down on Neckers. Is that what I do here? No, I changed my mind. I think I want to get the eggs on the board, get those harpies playing. I'm trying to think of how I want to set this up. So the Harpies, you're going to see the Harpies in action here. The Harpy. Both eggs on the same row. Very good for the Vran Warriors, which are devouring the weakest unit on the row every turn. <clears throat> and the eggs, which I believe are less they're, they're less Come powerful. Emperor Brigade, such a strong bronze card. I don't know if the Emperor Brigade is going to make it to the patch like this. Just dropping 21 strength bronzes, no problem. But then again, I don't think the Harpy Eggs are going to make it to the patch like this, giving 8 or 9 strength to anything that it eats. So KBT goes ahead and passes here. Now I still have to deal with Fake Siri, because if I pass, Fake Siri goes back to his board and I lose. So, but the best thing to do about Fake Siri when you're in a monster situation is eat her. Delicious Fake Siri. Not as tasty as the real Siri. I think we can all agree. But I gotta do something about that fake Siri. Vran Warrior will do it. So my first Vran Warrior eats the egg, and then my second Vran Warrior, being the last unit I played, now I should keep that Vran Warrior. Everything is all safe to pass here. Please tell me I do it. Of course I did. Of course I did. Now the Vran Warrior continues to consume after the pass. I think that probably will be changed. So I keep the last played unit, which is a 16th rank Brand Warrior. The Necker comes back at 7. Starting the round at 23 feels pretty good. It's almost like how True King Arid and ideally what you want it to be. But in this case, you can so control this by consuming a huge unit and then just making sure that's always the unit that stays. Consume monsters may be top tier. I don't know if... Uh, I think... Yeah, I think consume monsters can be top tier for that. So what to even do here? Make more Neckers. And then I think probably pass with a huge lead. I force him to play a bunch of cards here. I believe. I played a couple of games with this uh, with this deck, so I'm not... What do you need me to do? Stefan Skellen. So he's putting, he's putting his best card on the top of his deck, so the next thing he draws will be the card that he wants. And I guess I'm... <laughs> I'm messing with him, I guess. I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the tooltip for Stefan Skellen while I'm while he's looking at his cards, so it looks like I'm being trolly a little bit. Not so, not so. I go ahead and I play Aridin. There is your new weather immunity token on the bottom of Aridin there. Now, if you were to lock a unit, that's what goes away. Another thing that you can lock is a Necker and the Necker won't uh, reproduce on death after it is locked. Locking is a new mechanic. You may or may not have seen it before, but you will see it in this match. You will see it in this match. I won't tell you where it, where it goes. Who does it? Nilf Guardian Knight, your 11 strength bronze unit, which reveals a card at random to me, but he gets the 11 strength bronze. So K ran. I think I'm pretty happy keeping Aridin. Oh no, I want to buff the Necker as high as possible, so I eat Aridin. Because the Necker is being buffed on the board, and I am planning on playing another card after this, I believe. I'm thinking about the I'm thinking about also Dimeridium Shackling. I can see how it is most most down there. I'm thinking about Dimeridium Shackling Karen and keeping that card. That would have been a good play, but something happens and I, I had I had a really good idea, and then I completely lost the uh, the idea. And that's because of this. There is no escape. Ox comes down and locks the Necker, which makes me need to play another Necker if I want to keep big strength. But now I have uh, now I have ruined my chances of keeping the Karan. So, take it for what you will. I obviously reacted harshly to the locking. There is but one punishment for traitors. So he sees the crones. So I'm, I think I play the crones here. 
because now I don't want to keep the Necker. I want to keep something else, and I want the Necker to replace itself. So I might as well play something else. But instead, we're going to see the new Monster Nest. So the new Monster Nest doesn't duplicate units anymore. It creates four base units of whatever you target that is breedable. So if you target one egg, it makes, it makes four new eggs. Doesn't matter what else is on the row. It's a single. It's a independent of a single unit. Monster Nest has a lot more application. It is just better. Very dangerous card. It's a Gels buff too, if I'm not mistaken. And these all go in your graveyard. I don't know if there's a lot of stuff like uh, Banard Adepts and Fire Elemental, Lesser Elementals, stuff like that. That kind of junk fleeting from your graveyard. Monster Nest spawns. Are not and Ericus are also not fleeting. For the you would ask for this. That your day would do. Showing my whole hand to my opponent. So Commander's Horn is awesome with Monster's Nest. You'll be seeing a lot of this from me, I believe, after the patch. Unless they completely change. It's possible that maybe Monster Nest doesn't make four units, it makes three. It's possible that Commander's Horn doesn't do five, it does a different number. All of this was still in tuning, but I think if you can make a big row, you're always going to want Commander's Horn because you're always going to have a nice row for it. The investment isn't, isn't as high, though, either. And I'll behave, I promise. Now, he meant to lethal my row. I'm pretty sure he meant to lethal my, me my melee row. Um, but he doesn't have Becker's Twisted Mirror or anything like that, and I see his hand, and I know that my hand is stronger than his. Because of the reveal mechanics, I know that I have won this game already. Decisively. I'd be the best and last. <laughs> so it's really cool how the reveal the reveal mechanic in this case has I showed me that there is no reason for me to pass here. There aren't gonna be any surprises. This last thing here was a piece of science. I wanted to know if I dimeridium shackled the neck or if it would lose the lock. Since I had already won the game, I thought, does it take the lock away, the shackles? The answer is it does not. Locking stays. Dead treason. And that's GG. There's your monster's gameplay. Consume monsters. And you get to see uh, the new victory art here. So there you have it, folks. Consume Monsters gameplay and the new Nilfgaard patch. I think Consume Monsters are going to be so good. I'm very excited to play Karen Snacks 2.0, and we're going to see some crazy stuff coming out. Um, again, the final numbers and the final effects, I think, may need some tuning. I think Vran Warrior is a little on the strong side. I think Harpy Eggs are a little on the strong side. Monster Nest may be a little on the strong side, but we'll see. Uh, I think that the changes to Necker and Necker Warrior is my mo is the change that I'm most excited about because it takes the clunkiness away from them. And the monster passive change, moi, what can you say? No RNG, full control. We'll see how strong it is. But until next time, thanks so much for watching. Uh, got more gameplay to share for you throughout the week. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, like the video. Take care.